Zelda. Hey everybody, this is DSS, Dark Star Storm here, with Meteor Mondays, and today we're going to be exploring diamond diving. Oh, pff, sorry, we're not. We're exploring teledashing. It's not really an advanced technique for Zelda, but it is worth mentioning, and it's very useful for her. And I've met some people on Smashboards who actually don't know what it is, so this is a good tutorial so that they can find out. Okay. What I, what I did is I went to special verses and I select the fixed camera angle and then if you go to time, just do it on unlimited, you can play by yourself. So let's go ahead and do this. We're going to start on, oh wait, one more thing. And also in items, it's really useful to have the smoke ball on. You only need a one, so put it on low so they're not bugging you. And let's go into battlefield. So let me explain th th what the teledash is, in case you don't know. When you do a grounded um, Farrar's Wind, Farrar's Wind, with Zelda, you can air do you can end it with an air dodge. It's air dodge interruptible. So you can do an air dodge. So what's th what that's useful for is if you air dodge diagonally in the ground, like you would a wave dash you can pseudo wave dash for long distances and that's really good because Zelda's run is very slow but with teledashing you get there in a flash and also it's good for mind games and it's also good for um, using the platforms like so so the reason really. The reason why I had you spawn a smoke ball, okay, let's get rid of this one, is so that you can tell where your, your tell see the smoke ball move now you can track to see where you're going very useful now there are certain angles that are kind of hard to go into um, that angle is actually kind of hard to go on. It's very precise, and if you don't do it, you'll end up just doing a forwards teleport. So it's a little bit hard to do. Practice makes perfect. So go ahead and practice it here. And this is probably the best way to practice the teledash. It's not an advanced technique by any means, but it is very useful. And pretty soon, let me get rid of this, you can tell exactly where you're teledashing. Ah. See? I mean, obviously, I need practice with it. Because I'm not perfect. No one can really get perfect at anything. But it's there. And there are also some other uses for teledashing that I find really, really helpful. For example... If you, um, say on Battlefield, you teledash to this platform, then there are uses for this. You can immediately just teleport to the ledge. Or if you're on the ledge, you can go up here, wave land, and continue your telegame. That's, that's the, uh, m the teleport mind games, by the way, sort of. That's the word for it. So, it's very useful. And there are even some Zeldas, like myself, that are almost that are teledash based, where we use the teledash a lot more than other people would. It may not be the best Zelda, but it is fun. So this is my video on diamond diving. Um, it's very short because this is not an advanced technique. It's very easy and simple to use once you practice it. So that's no that's kind of it. I mean, if you if you want to now practice it, go ahead. I have nothing more to teach you. But just fill up a little bit more of your time in case you want to watch. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of teledashing on other stages. And I'll talk about the stages and how teledashing can be used. So, Yoshi's Story. This one, you really have to learn that, that side angle. 
there are all the compass directions, you know, north, uh, north, south, east, and west, but then there's south, west, southeast, northwest, and northeast. But then there is, um, west by northwest, which is this, ah, which is that. I, I haven't practiced teledashing on this, so I may be a little bit rusty. That's the uh, west by northwest. So there's that. You're really going to have to use that a lot on Yoshi's Story. You cannot use the cardinal direction or else you you cannot just use northwest because you will end up just doing that. And that's super pre predictable and easily punished. So um, also, really, really something I need to work on is just going right above me okay there is this this is pro the straight across angle is kind of hard on some stages because as you can see I'm right near the end of the animation so it's kind of hard to do this and not this it's a little bit hard oh and if you're feeling really brave you can try to Teledash onto Randall. I don't advise that, but if you can do it, by all means, do it. It's something I haven't practiced, so if you can do that consistently, then I think you're very good at double uh, teledashing. Yeah. So this is teledashing on Yoshi's Story. Let's go to another stage. There are some stages that are not useful for the teledash at all. For example, um, this. I mean, it's usable. But not from platform to platform unless it's tilted. It's actually kind of hard. It's kind of hard because of the platform placement. Oh wait, uh, and also worth mentioning, I said unless it tilts, but on in Project M it does not tilt at all. So it's kind of hard to do. It's easy to go as I fail it. It's easy to go from anywhere on the stage to anywhere on the main part of the stage to this platform, but it's and it's easy to go from this platform to any part of the stage, but from this platform to that one, it's a little bit hard because there is no good angle for that at all. So that's something that should be mentioned. Now for the next stage, I'm mostly just highlighting the do's and don'ts. I'm not going to highlight the ones that it's okay on. For example, this, it's okay, but it's not the best. This, oh my word, it's horrible. Okay, um, this is okay because of all the variants you can do. You know, you could go from here to there, which is, you know, that's the predictable area. Or you could go from there to there. Um, what's hard to do is here to there. Very hard. It's pretty hard. You pretty much have to be at the edge, like so. And it's kind of hard. Or you can do this. If you tell, if you um, end the air dodge straight down, it's actually a little bit easier to land on small platforms. But it's, it's really, it's kind of hard to go from the top platforms to each other. And also platforms like this, you can just do that. So that's very worth that's worth noting. And also you can kill yourself. Now, next stage. I'm not doing all of them, I'm just doing a few. Next stage, let's do Dreamland, because that's a that's not a bad stage for Zelda, because it's easy for her to recover. So this is one of Zelda's better stages, I think. The problem with this is that these platforms are very far apart. I think they're about as far apart as uh, the ones in WarioWare. And you should have the um, North by Northwest down. It's not a bad stage for Zelda. Also, I'm failing. It's not a bad stage for Zelda by any means, but if you want to, this is probably not the best option in the world. Just because if you fail, it's easily punished. Okay. 
Next stage, and you could have end ended the video around the 4 minute mark and it, you would have gotten the picture. I'm just doing this for those who want to stick around or want to learn more about this and what stages it's useful for and what it's not. And also I'm enjoying talking to you guys. I don't get to talk to you guys on this channel. So this, which I, I consider this to be one of Zelda's best stages. Just because she has a very good option in the stage that is Sheik with this being, like, Sheik's best stage. And also, it's sort of like a, uh, another battlefield in that you have the platforms. The only problem with this stage is how the platforms move. Sometimes it can mess up angles. For example, I'm kind of having a hard time teledashing onto that. So it can kind of mess up angles. Oh, and if there is a platform about, about that height, like this, if you, if you just teleport directly to the side, um, a lot of times you can just land on it. Not like this, it has to be a little bit closer. But I think this is one of Zelda's best stages, because teledashing is such a good option. So, next, would be... This is a terrible stage for teledashing. Another good stage would be this, though the problem with that is, for me to show this off, I can't. I, I need, the Project M needs to fix that. So, what we'll do is actually we're going to leave this, and go ahead and turn this down to normal. And for some reason it didn't accept Zelda, okay. So let's go back into there. And Green Hill Zone. This is actually not a bad Three, stage for Zelda. Two, one, just because go! the you can't always cover the platform option. The problem is with moving platforms in Project Dem is when they're moving, you can't teledash through them. I don't get why this is here, but you can't. But you can teledash around them. So if I'm right here and I teledash down diagonally, I will slide off this while be teleporting. Um, and then reappear at the length. Actually, instead of telling you, I'll show you. See me slide there? See, I slid for a second. You can also tell that with the camera. So, the good, the good thing is now you can do, go off moving platforms. Problem is, is it does shorten the length that you can go, so Sometimes, you'll come up a little bit short, so you'll air end up air dodging to the stage, like so. Like that. So, just be careful, and get to know the length of the teleport. But all in all, this is an okay stage for Zelda. It's it's pretty neutral. It doesn't have any big uses or um, big weaknesses for Zelda. It doesn't really have any big advantages. It's just a good stage. Only problem is, she can't really zone very well with with uh, Dins, but also it means that people can't go as many places to escape Dins. And for some reason, I'm, this is not a video about about stages. It's a video about teledashing. Why am I talking about good stages for Zelda? Um, this is okay. It's actually pretty good. I'm not going to go bother going into it. Actually, you know what? I think this is the last stage that we need to go into. Let's go into it. I, I'm if I'm rambling, go ahead and end the video. This is this is mostly me just explaining it for those few people who will want to hear my voice. So I don't get to talk to you guys much, the Smashing community on my channel, because this is I get to do it on my Let's Play channel, but not on my Smash channel. So oh really. I started teledashing after seeing Zmei do it, of course. Pretty much any Zelda has seen Zmei do something and wanted to try it. So I did, and I ended up doing it almost non-stop, because this was the, one of the first few techniques I've learned for Zelda. So, um, tip with this stage is you want you need to get the, um, the, the slight diagonal angle down. If you want to go from here to here, you need to get it down. Um, 
The da the down diagonal angle I find is easier, but the up one is harder. And don't even bother trying to go from here to there. Uh, unless, actually, I should go and try this. That works. I guess if it's not a fast character, for example, if you're against Ganondorf and that was fail. If you're up against Ganondorf and you need to get out quickly, I guess this will work. But the thing is, there are far better options like that, that. I keep doing that on the stage. So yeah, I think that's it for teledashing. And I, I would have re redone this video because I'm kind of rambling, but I mean, I did say that I was done here. So that is it for the teledash. Go ahead and share if you want to see someone who doesn't know how to teledash and wants to. I think this would be a great way for them to learn. And I'll see you next time for Wing It Wednesday's Teledashing, where I will use this technique in some matches. Yes. Yeah.